Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be my review for the pilot of Fargo. And oh my god, I was really, I'm so happy that this finally came out, guys. I was really looking forward to Fargo, not just because of the cast, but just because of the whole plot. Um, when we got that seven-minute sneak peek, I was really looking forward to the show. I, it, it was really funny. There were some really funny parts, and it turns out Fargo is one of the best pilots I've seen in a very in a in a in a while it's the best pilot i've seen all year by far um not only was everything amazing in the pilot but it just i felt like i've already know the characters on this show and i already know where this show is going only in the first episode and plus it had amazing acting amazing performances amazing scenes great twists we had some i mean a lot of people died in this episode three people died that could have been major characters, and they died in this episode. And I, I love that the show has the balls to do that. And it's kind of like Justified a little bit, but it's so much different than Justified as well because it's about these two people who, you know, it's about how, like, this innocent town turns into this very violent place. And I just, I really love, you know, that whole, um, that whole, um, the whole plot to it. So, let's just get to this pilot, because as I said, I loved everything about it. Everything was amazing. And, uh, I'll do my recap, and then I'll talk about what I really liked about it. So, first, it, it, basically, the show says, um, this is a true story that took place in Minnesota in 2006. Obviously, we know it's not true, but, um, we see this car that drives on a night along a snow-lined road, and there's this man named Lorne Malvo, who is Billy Bob Thornton's character. Who listens to a religious program, we hear a thumbing and screaming from his trunk, a deer runs across the road, and he loses control of the car. It crashes off the road into some snow, and the trunk pops open. A man wearing only boxers jumps off and runs out into the snowy fields. Lorne walks slowly after him and finds a deer lying on the snow, dying. Um, so that's only the first few minutes. Then we see a washer that rattles in a basement, and here's where we meet, um... Um, I guess our protagonist of the series, um, Lester Nygaard. Um, and he and his wife are eating breakfast and talking about Gordo's birthday, and he says the washer sounds angrier than usual. It actually is kind of funny. Um, and she tells him his brother got a fancy new washer dryer with his new promotion money, and she says she married the Ron Nygaard, but then it says it's a joke. He says he's got to get back to it and tells him that Kitty told her that salesmen make their own wins, and he needs to try to make his own wins, needs to try harder. Um, she tells him to wear a nicer tie, and he reminds her she bought it, and he tells her, well, you bought me this tie. You can see that they definitely do not have a good relationship, him and his wife. You know, his wife is always yelling and, and being very, um, mean towards him. She doesn't really care much about him. It seems like she cares about him, but she's, like, doesn't, um, she, she, he's not good enough for her. That's what it seems like it is. And she says if he was a better salesman, she would buy him a nice tie. She nags him about fixing the washer and says Kitty told her his brother always fixes things. She goes downstairs, stares at the offending washer, then leaves for work. And at work, this is probably the scene that got that was really funny of the seven-minute preview that we got. He's selling this couple on insurance policies. The husband says they just came in to add her to his health care because um, the wife is pregnant. And uh, he pulls out this brochure, talks of insurance to protect the baby. He starts getting very morbid, talking about all these things, and making them feel like it's all casual and everything. He's like, oh, these things happen all the time. And uh, obviously very startled by this, they leave and say they have to leave soon. They run out before he can even give them a brochure. Uh, that, that was actually pretty funny. Um, so he stares in the window at a new washer. Sam and his sons walk up, and basically we find out that Sam is this guy he went to school with, kind of the bully. He kind of picked on Lester as a kid. Um, and he especially made fun of his last name. He calls him the N-word, basically. Um, and Lester corrects his pronunciation to Nygaard. And he asks how he's been and tells Lester that his job is doing great and he just bought his summer house. He bellyates Lester and tells his kids that Lester is the guy who stuffed in the oil drum and, run, and rolled onto the highway. Sam asks who the girl he was with, who, who the girl was he went with in high school and he says Pearl who it turns out that it, that's his wife Sam says he had a rack she had a rack and then she gave him a tug once and had soft fat hands now Lester says they're married one of Sam's kids tell Lester that's embarrassing Sam says he never knew what she saw him and he asked what it was it his pencil dick or rat face Sam tells him he used to write his name in Sharpie on his fist before he punched Lester so everyone who who would know he did it um, Lester says it was a long time ago as Sam holds out his fist he does a fake punch, and Lester flinches and busts his face on the window. So he just punched him in the face. 
and then he's in the ER. Here's where Lester and Lauren first meet. Um, he asks the nurse how much longer. She's very unconcerned. She doesn't really seem to care at all. She's like, oh, you know, soon. Um, he tries to drink his soda but can't, and Lauren asks if he can have a strip. So Lester tells him to take it, and Lauren drinks the soda and thanks him. He asks what happened to his nose, and he says it was a misunderstanding. Lauren asks who un misunderstood whom. Lester says he doesn't want to dwell on it, and Lauren asks why. He says if he puts him in the hospital, it should. Lester says he was outnumbered three to one by a big guy, and the two kids, who are pretty big, he says he should have shown Sam what's what, what's what, and tells Lauren Sam was a bully in high school and still is. Lauren asks why he didn't show him, and Lester says he has his sons with him. And Lauren asks why he let a man beat him in front of your in front of his sons. Basically, Lauren is saying, "Why didn't you just give him a fight?" And Lester says he's embarrassed Sam in front of his sons before, and he's and he says that he was talking about his wife. And Lauren asks if he slept with his wife. Lester tries to explain, and Lauren says he would have killed him. Lester laughs, but Lauren's expression shows that he's very serious about this. Lester thinks he's joking about the whole thing. You can tell that Lauren is not kidding around here. Lauren wants to kill this guy. Uh, Lester says he bullied him for years, gave him an ulcer, tells him about Sam putting him in an oil barrel on the road. Lauren says this guy didn't just doesn't deserve to keep breathing. And Lester asks what if he what is he supposed to do and asks casually if Lauren can kill Sam for him. Lauren asks if he's asking him to kill him and Lester says they're just talking. The nurse comes and Lester asks her to wait a second. Lauren asks his name and, Le and tells Lester to say yes or no. The nurse gets impatient. Lester says, uh, yes, I'm coming and follows her. And he looks back nervously at Lauren. Here's where we meet our cops. Um, we meet the, this, the chief, Vern, who gets out and asks Molly, who is basically um, working with uh, Vern. Uh, she asks what she found. She tells him about the footprints that went to the woods. He points out the blood. He walks a little away. And uh, they agree to check the footprints. And walk into the snowy field. They head into the woods, talk about his wife. She points out the frozen body sitting in the in the woods. Vern comes home, calls out to his wife, Ida, who's in the kitchen. He tells her it smells good, and she says their, bo their boy wanted a burger. She's also heavily pregnant. And he goes down the hall, looks at the mostly unfinished nursery. He tells her about the body Molly found in the woods, and he thinks he was a driver, but thinks it's odd that he was only in his underwear, and they couldn't find his clothes anywhere. So... Vern says he's ready to paint uh, when she decides. She says he's a good man, and his sister was crazy to tell her not to marry him. Vern says his sister is crazy. Um, so then a blow-up doll is inflated by Sam's idiot sons. We learn very quickly that, you know, Sam's sons are idiots. We knew this already, but Lauren walks in, and you can see Lauren's very, very serious this whole time. Lauren's a very serious character, and he sees them wrestling, and he tells them what he's doing it wrong and explains how to properly choke someone. He asks which is older. Mickey says it's him. They argue. Sam comes down the stairs, and Lauren asks if he's Sam. He looks behind him and says, me. Sam asks why he's there, and Lauren says his younger son seemed dim. Sam asks what he says, and Lauren asks if he had tested, if he had tested, if he's had him tested because his IQ seems low, and they tell their dad to hit him, but he's got some men in his suits there and holds back. Sam asks what he wants. Lauren says he just wanted to take a look at him. He says that'll do it and leaves, and Sam is very flummoxed. So, Lester and Pearl come to Chaz and Kitty's house. That That's uh, Chaz is Lester's brother. Kitty is Chaz's wife. And Pearl nags him as his nose. We can see, again, just, they just don't have a very good relationship. And Chaz is talking to him and telling him there's more to life than just Minnesota and says they need to broaden their horizon. He asks about Lester's nose. They go out to the garage. Chess, um, Chaz says that he thinks Gordo might have the autism. He says his son has been peeing in a jar. He keeps it in his closet and asks what that's about. He shows Lester his gun cabinet, then pulls out a gun, um, giant submachine gun. Lester asks if it's illegal, and, um, if it's legal, and Chaz says that's not technically, but he's an American that pays his taxes, and Army Buddy got it for him. And, uh, so in the car on the way home, Pearl shoot, and basically he says, you know, Lester can hold it, he doesn't, he doesn't, but then drops it and breaks it. Chaz chews him out and tells him that Pearl has had it with him. Chaz says guys he works with about talk and about how they look up to their older brothers, and sometimes he tells them his brother is dead. And basically, you can just see that Lester's not doesn't have a good job or anything. So Pearl chews Lester out for hitting his brother and everything. And uh, she asks what's the matter with him and won't shut up about it. And at Rundle Reality, a guy talks to Cell about it. He answers another line, it's Lauren. He says he got delayed but confirms he finished the assignment. He says he took a personal detour um, of a day or two, but then he will, uh, he will uh, go do the next job. Lauren pulls up at a strip club, Sam sits inside. And Lauren comes in and watches a guy as he goes back with a stripper. 
Um, so the manager chews out an employee for taking sheets off one bed, putting them on another, and the guy says he shakes them off first, and as Lauren comes in, he asks for a room, and she asks if it's just for him, and Lauren walks by the kid shoveling snow, then turns and asks why he lets her talk to him like that. The boy says she's not that bad, and asks what he should do. Lauren tells him if he pisses her, if he pisses in her gas tank, her car will never um, drive straight again. She curses, runs outside, yelling at the kid who runs so fast he trips over the shovel. Um, so Sam's idiot brother sit on the sofa. Gina sits smoking at Bruce, and we find out that basically Sam is dead. Um, you know, we, we find that out here, and Lauren is lying, basically saying that he's this guy, um, Mo, who, he says his dad is giving all the money to his younger brother, Mo, and he's trying to get all of Sam's money, basically, just trying to steal it and pretending to be this other guy. Um, so then what happens is, there, there's a lot going on with Vern and Molly, but not too much going on there, so, then we get, this is probably the most crucial scene in the episode, is when, um, Lauren um, walks out of the hotel. Lester sees him. He asks what the heck. He asks what the hell he was doing, but then goes on to work. His boss, Bo, asks what happened. He says he tripped on some ice. Bo asks him to put the file on, and he finds out that Sam is dead. So Lester comes in the Chinese restaurant, and Lauren is going into him, and um, you know Lester wants to know if he really killed Sam. So Lauren says, "Oh my God, is Sam dead?" And he asks Lester how he feels about it, and he says Lester killed him. Because if you remember, Lester was the one that said, yeah, that said he wanted him to kill him. He thought he was just joking around about it, but Lorne actually did it. Um, and basically, he says, he tells him that he's more of a man today than yesterday, and he says there are no rules and that we're gorillas. And the biggest part of this scene here is when he says, if you don't stand up against all the shit the wife and the boss make you eat, it will never end. So, he kind of thinks about this when he goes over back to his wife, you know, Pearl's hanging up her coat, and she's yelling at Lester about this and that, basically telling him, she tells him if he killed her washer, and he stammers and says he was trying to be a man, Pearl tells him he's not a man, doesn't even have a man, she doesn't even know why she married him, and, you know, he's so upset, he picks up this hammer, and she asks if he's really going to hit her, and says that's a laugh, cracks her over the head with a wrench, she seems frozen for a moment, but then blood trickles right down her forehead, He's very startled by what he's done, but he keeps hitting her over and over again, pummels her repeatedly while he says, oh jeez, oh jeez, she's bloody and good and dead, and feeling so, like, terrified what he's done, because again, Lester was an innocent man, he strips off his clothes, puts them in a plastic bag, changes and makes a call, and he says, you've got to help me, I've done something bad, a female voice says it's the motor in, he asks for room 23, and is connected to Lauren, he says he doesn't know what to do, Lauren asks if he's a bad boy, Lester says a hammer and then stammers, he tells him where he lives, and Lauren says he'll be right over. He loads his gun, play acts shooting someone, then, accuses, then he accuses of her murder. He opens the door, says, what did you do? You killed her. He tries a couple of times, then lays down the gun and goes to the door, and it's Vern the sheriff. He lets him in. Vern talks about the weather. He asks if Pearl's home, and says he, sh he slipped. He asks if he went to the hospital, and uh, Vern asks if he talked to anyone there. He tells him that he, he heard he was talking to another guy about Sam. Lester says no, and then acts skittish. He's like... I didn't do anything. I just got home. I just got home. I thought that was really funny. The whole scene where it's like, I didn't do anything. I just got home. I just got home. Do not worry. Don't worry. I did nothing. He's trying to seem all innocent and everything. Vern sees blood on the floor, and he says, he, you know, and he's calling for backup when Lauren comes in and shoots Vern in the back twice. Um, so, basically, Lauren has basically saved Lester. Um, he kicks the gun away and asks Lester if there's any more cops. He shakes his head no. Vern chokes out his last breath, and then he dies. So he asks what Lester told him. He says he asked about Sam, but Jester's lips close. He asks if that's the basement, sets down Lester's rifle, heads down the basement stairs. So now they've killed three people so far. Sam, Pearl, and now Vern. Um, so Molly comes to the door, sees Vern on the floor. She calls Officer down. The dispatcher responds. Lester panics down the basement as Molly calls for anyone in the house to come out with their hands up. Lester reads the poster on the wall. It says, what if you're right? And they're wrong. Runs himself head first into a wall, knocks himself out cold beside his dead wife. Molly comes carefully down the stairs, checks his pulse um, and Molly's. Bill comes down the stairs, tells him the husband's alive. Bill gets queasy, says, ah, jeez, and leaves to go throw up. So then, um, the very end of the episode, um, we, we are then introduced to Gus Grimley, who is gonna be the cop, you know, the, the new cop, basically. It's another cop. Um, and this cop is sitting in his cop car, his kid radios him, I, I like this scene, I like seeing that, you know, he's a normal guy. Um, and his daughter's calling him, and he tells her to do his homework, to do her homework. A car skids at by him at top speed, and he flips on his light and pursues. The car pulls over, and he pulls out his ticket book and pen, and jolts, and jots down the license plate. 
puts on his hat, gets out of his car, flips on his flashlight, comes to the window of the car, knocks it, and it's Lauren driving. Lauren greets him, and Gus asks for his license and registration. Lauren says they could do it that way, and he could see how it goes, or he can get go get in his car and drive away. Gus asks why he would do that, and Lauren says some roads you don't go down. And maps, and some maps used to say here there'll be dragons. Gus asks him to step out as Greta radio calls, calling for his dad. Gus wavers, and Lauren says he's rolling up his windows. He does, and he drives away. Gus stands there and then gets meekly back into his car. So at the hospital, Lester lies in bed. He comes to and looks around, looks at his hands. He's a little hole in his hand, and he hides it under the sheet. And in the very end of the episode, Molly's out with her dad, asks for her to come to work for him. She tells him she's a cop, but he says hostesses at restaurants usually don't get shot. She refused the job and tells him instead of fishing with him, she's going to work. So that was the premiere, and it was absolutely amazing. I loved everything about this premiere. All the characters are great, and the acting's amazing. I mean, you got Billy Bob Thornton, who's really great at his character, but the real star here is Martin Freeman. Really, he's the best in this show. Um, you know, I love his character. It's very different. It's a very different character than he's played than, you know, it's very different than, um, the character he plays in Sherlock. You know, he plays Watson on that show. Very different type of character, but really great, um, in this show. He's a very good job at, you know, the Minnesotan accent. I think he's great with that. Um, also, I love the character, uh, I already love the character of Gus, played by Colin Hanks, I think his name is. He's a really great actor. I love where his character's going. Also, Molly, I really like her, and the, the big thing is here that Lauren kills whoever Lester says, so Lauren and Lester are basically working together. Lester, though, still is an innocent guy. He doesn't want to kill anybody, but he's realizing that basically he tells Lauren to kill somebody. Lauren is going to do it. Lauren just doesn't, just kills people. He doesn't take shit from people, and I'm very interested in seeing where that whole thing's gonna go. Um, one of the things I also loved about this premiere was, again, as I said, you know all the characters, but one of the other great parts is the humor in this show. This show does not seem like a show that would have all this humor, but all this time it's hilarious. Lester is a hilarious character because he's an, he's just, he's so innocent, and he doesn't realize that he's killing all these different people. There's some really funny scenes in this show, like, especially the scene, um, where he was trying to cover up, um, Killing Pearly was like, I didn't do anything, I didn't do it, I just got home, I thought that was really funny. Um, I was also very surprised by how many people died on this show already. You've already had, um, the bully died, Sam, you've had, um, Lester's wife die, Pearl, and you had Vern die. Now, the other thing is, I did not see the Fargo movie, so I don't know if this is like this, but either way, it's an amazing show, I cannot wait to see where it goes. Um, will they find out that... Lester killed, um, Lester killed Pearl. Will they find out what this looks like the next episode as I'm questioning him about it? Are they gonna find out that Lauren killed Vern? I'm not sure, but that's it for my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, perfect, um, perfect, um, premiere. Can't not wait to see the rest of the show. I think it's gonna be an amazing show, and, uh, I, again, I really hope you guys enjoyed this, um, video, and I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for Arrow, so see you then. Bye!